Hey my friends, I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Um, some of it's been covered in the past 12 years on here, some hasn't. Okay, for those of you who can't stick around this long, um, you shouldn't be in the business at all. <laughs> There's so much information here you need. Okay, first of all, I'll let you know if you even need to be here. Um, I'll be talking about a lot of sound things that you should be doing and should definitely not be doing. Um, some things on stage you should or should not be doing. Um, just a lot of that stuff that you are doing wrong. There's no such thing as wrong. Uh, who are you to say when so-and-so does it the other way? Anyway, if you're one of those people, um, get to fudge out. Anyway, so there's a lot to be learned here. Um, if you are uh, still using analog uh, sound system gear and so forth. Um, if you are using all digital stuff and using your iPad to run your gear, you're still going to learn a lot here. Okay, I won't be discussing uh, your way of doing it. I'm going for the people who actually um, wouldn't be here if they understood that really well because a lot of people just don't know how to run a PA or get anything out of it or um, what wattage actually is, how much wattage they need for a sound system in order to get anything across, um, what the lies are about it and so forth and then all the way down to your bad habits on stage uh, goofy looking stuff up there that you shouldn't be doing um, things that are just flat out wrong on stage and from a viewers point even though everybody else does it um, just looks horrible makes you look like an amateur that you are um, if you're pulling this crap off okay so let's just get to a few things number one I'm just going to start with a really quick thing and this will be lighting okay even if you're playing at the local moose club or wherever the basic thing that most people are using these days are the LED because who in their right mind would be using par cans with halogen bulbs in them uh, nobody if you're using them um, <laughs> Throw them in the trash, spend a couple of bucks, they're not expensive. They usually have four really thin um, par cans on there that can um, work great for you. They can usually come with their own foot pedal that you can set uh, everything to certain colors or whatever. Um, you can use a little, DM, a little um, DMX controller for the whole thing. Very easy to use. Um, and especially for the ones on the front. Um, the number one rule in lighting is to light the band. Okay, so this is a uh, very important thing. Light the band. <laughs> okay, um, if you go to any show in the world, whether it's a small show or a big show, and somebody has it done right, correctly, 90% um, of the lighting will be in the back not in the front okay so that's always it's always in the back uh, easiest way is to throw a piece of i-beam truss in the back and toss it up on a crank stand it'll take you about 10 minutes to set up your whole lighting in the back that will look way more impressive than um probably what you're already doing okay lighting is pretty much cheap these days um real quick number two don't use dj lighting okay things that spin and do little just dj lighting uh, that's not for bands and it looks very hokey okay here's the other thing when you are using your lighting in the front okay all your scenes in the back are you know cool colors whatever and lasers and um your uh different uh, moving head fixtures, blah, blah, blah. All the great looking stuff, if you're even going that way. Otherwise, just use these little bitty um, par cans, again, LED. Um, but up front, the band should be lit 
in white or just slightly in off-white give them a tan a little bit but no other color okay the worst thing you can do to anybody in the band is to put green lights <laughs> on their faces or on their bodies or anything uh, any color of light on the band on their faces whatever looks horrible so if all you have is a couple of light trees on the sides um, make that la make that last light white on both sides and just fl flood the front with white lights um, buy a few little tiny spots you can buy some for 10 bucks each and throw them on the front and have white spots on everybody but white is the only color you should be using anything else um, it's just flat horrible and it's a huge no-no okay and that's what I need that's all I got to say about that okay so colors in the back and white light in the front okay that's the way that goes and um, of course uh, other things on the stage then we'll get into sound um, colored cables colored mic cables uh, orange extension cords blah 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 all goes away they are black all of them black uh, tidy them up a um, bunch of guitar cords being strung across the stage looks like crap uh, the more wireless you can go do it Ooh, it ruins my sound you haven't tried a good wireless in 30 years have you okay so yeah um, tidy those things up they make the little velcro things or you can uh, the velcro is going to look the best if you'll take the time to do it otherwise use gaffer tape not duct tape make everything that you use black um, black cords matter black tape matters um, no no gray duct tape looks horrible okay um, your drinks your beverages on the floor no okay on top of your amp and full of beer bottles of crap no looks horrible um ashtrays and stuff up there no get rid of that garbage okay um just looks bad if you're gonna have a drink um those little coasters that mount to your mic stand are cool but do, do not put the tube that is going up to your mouth that looks like a talk box nobody wants to see your saliva going back down and then the drink coming up through the tube because you just can't wait till in between a song to grab a drink and take it reason you don't want to put your stuff everywhere else especially on the ground is because people are going to see your ass crack and anytime you bend over to do anything is a total um amateur move yes and especially pedal boards if you're bending over to adjust crap on your pedal board you need some new shit okay there's no reason to be bending over to adjust something on your pedal board no reason at all um, if you have to get 30 different delay pedals because you're constantly having to change one delay thing to get it right um, use 30 different delay pedals Otherwise, just use the stuff that's out there that is good instead of using dinosaur crap or stuff that is remakes of dinosaur crap because you just look like an idiot bending over doing that kind of crap. Um, as far as amplifiers, again, your ankles do not have ears. And so, therefore, put your amps up on a stand not up on a chair because it happened to be there not on a um, coffee table or a t any kind of table just because it's there at the moose lodge you know there happened to be some leftover furniture from a garage sale so you start stacking your shit on it um, buy a proper amp stand they don't cost anything okay you're going to play a four thousand dollar instrument and then you're going to just put your amp on the ground and blah 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 no and remember your amp is for you to hear no one else your instruments they go through the sound system it's not a pa per se pa is public address you're making announcements that has nothing to do with instruments in it 
um, every instrument should go through your sound system no matter what at every gig even the drums yeah, drums are loud enough um, that's why you put the big plastic shield around him if he um, is moronic enough to not tone it down either fire his ass or put a shield around him and then you can put him in the PA um, even if he does play soft um, put him in the PA, make his drums sound big, but they don't have to be at a big volume. Okay, so um, I'll come back to some of this as I realize it. Um, remember, I know it's sad to say this, but nobody wants to see the chick with the tambourine all the time, and it's always a fat chick, sorry. Guys can for some reason be fat and getting old and get away on stage, but nobody wants to see a moose knuckle on a 400 pound chick up front. Um, a camel toe is fine on the hot chick, but yeah, it's playing the stereotypical role. The only way you can get by with the um, fat chick is if she's black and she's, that's the way it is, sorry. Um, sings her ass off, you know. Um, nobody wants to see somebody that looks like your mother or grandma on a stage. Old guys, like I said, can get away with it. Um, the ladies could get away with it if they would take care of themselves instead of looking like a martyr. Um, okay, so let's get, that's basically it. If I come across some of the other stuff, I know there's plenty more. Oh yeah, tuning. Tune while you're playing. Not in between songs unless you have it on your set list. Okay, everybody tune here because I'm going to talk about this. Um, but you're like, but it, it makes my guitar go silent and mutes it when I use it. Buy a better tuner. Tune while you're playing. There's always going to be a note somewhere where you can hit it and tune it while you're playing. Um, <laughs> there you go. Um, amplifiers on the side of you are going to be the best place to put them because they will ruin a front mix if somebody hears them things. Again, if you have them down at your feet, um, you're going to have to turn it up 10 times what it should be and it's going to just ruin your mix because um, the audience is going to hear that. Again, it's not for them to hear. It's only for you. Your amp is for you. Nobody else. Not even the people on stage. You can put it in their monitor mix. Okay. Speaking of which, monitor mixes. It's supposed to be a monitor mix for every single person in the band. Not that you just go get a thing and everybody jumps all the cables together and you end up with a one ohm load. No. Um, mo a separate monitor mix for everybody. Um, if you don't have a monitor mixer, this is kind of a cool way uh, to let you guys know this because some of you don't understand um, monitoring. Um, everybody should have a, their own monitor sense and generally it will be for on most mixers and then five and six auxiliary out will be for effects returns okay and you actually get to EQ your effects while we're on effects um, sorry kids um, if you've ever listened to an album or a, uh, anything that has music on it um, unless it's something weird like a megaphone, um, auto-tune, something extreme, distortion, blah, 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 huge effect, there is no reverb on vocals. There might be on recordings a slight plate reverb, but it's transparent and you won't hear it. It's just there to fatten things up. Why didn't they just put a little bit of extra bottom end on it? Don't know because you cannot hear it. Everybody submerses themselves uh, in reverb. Take that crap out and everything will sound 10 times better or 100 times better. Um, way better. How's that? Get rid of effects unless you're just going to do a delay on a Pink Floyd song and it has to be right there. Then pull it back out. If you are using effects and you're going to be a moron about it, shut them off between songs. Hell! foot switch. <laughs> you can put it in line with your effects unit, but my effects unit is built into my thing. Don't use those. They're all garbage if you have an effects unit built into your um, powered mixing board or whatever. They're all garbage. They all sound like garbage. They really do. So 
go out of a real effects unit, put it through a loop or an AB box, and then go back into your channel. Um, it turns on and off the effects between songs. Otherwise, people cannot understand you if you're one of the people that have to just crank effects everywhere. It really does ruin everything. I know you guys love your reverb and your vocals. Um, get rid of it. Don't put it in monitors. You will sing off key, so forth and so forth. Okay, so you've got your monitors. You have people that do not understand the concept that if you don't have a person there with a separate monitor mixer, or if you don't own a monitor mixer, um, a monitor mix will have um, an EQ for each person in your rack. Okay, and that EQ should always be a 31 band. Don't get f well, I gotta get a 215, then another 215 band EQs because you know they're just monitors. Um, Chances are, if you're going to have feedback, that one particular one that's feeding back, you're not going to have the right one there. So, get 31 band EQs. <laughs> Don't chance out on all this crap. Again, you're trying to go out there and do something, and for the same price, you're going to find a 31 band EQ as you would a 215, then you could probably find one that has two 31 bands in it. Even the Elisus ones have two 31 bands in it, and they're the size of... You know, just one rack space. Okay. People do not understand that you cannot. They're like, okay, in my vocals, can you give me a little more high end? And then in the bass guitar over here, put uh, take out some of the mids in my mix. No, they cannot. You have an equalizer and everything. All you have is volumes for each thing. That's all you get for those of you who do not understand this. And you don't want to even understand Hopefully you're watching the video so you can understand some of it and deal with what you're going to get because that's all you're going to get. Again, unless you have a separate monitor mix and a guy mixing it for you, blah, blah, blah. Everything is just what it's going to be. Equalizers should be set, even your house EQ for your mains, um, flat, 100% flat. And then if you're not using all these really low frequencies like 20k or up to 40k or all this crap you're not going to be using in your monitors or whatever shut them off because you're wasting your power amps um ability to kick out some volume okay because it's trying to reproduce that so you're overheating and overworking your uh, power amps to reproduce something that it can't your cabinet won't reproduce it if you have crappy monitors. Okay, now there is a way around a little bit of this. If your vocals are always sounding bad, but everything else is passable, then again, um, there are monitors. They're, they're powered monitors, or you can do your own thing, or you can use a kickback um, like keyboard amp works very well as a monitor but you just put the line from uh, your monitor mix and then you split it back and it goes back to the main mixer um, you send that into one channel of your monitor it has EQ it has volume it has everything then you can take your microphone and split it yes they make Y adapters and you can split them where you can buy a pedal that splits it, which is a much better thing. Just a mic splitter. That's what it's for. It's not to step on a pedal and it goes this way and then it goes that way. It's there to actually split the signal in the good way. And send one to the mixer like normal and one, and you can just shut your mic off through your monitor because this is what you're looking for. And then stick it in another channel of your monitor down there and you have your own EQ and your own volume and you can turn up your highs and your bottoms and make your microphone sound exactly like you want to and then anything else that you want to split and put in other channels you're like what but I want more channels of that if you really want all that man you can go out and get you a 10 channel Behringer 
mixer and run it into a channel of that and mix all kinds of crap if you really want to like send a snake over to there and split everything and put it in your stuff and mix your own monitor till your heart's content that is a beautiful thing okay if you have people like that everybody else in the world has got by fine without it but if you're one of those people that just are going to be a pain in the ass and you want all that stuff, then there you go. Otherwise, use in-ears, like um, in-ear monitors, like everybody else does, and um, be a pro about it. But you do have that option. Okay, let's hurry up. Let's go to main speakers. Okay, again, your horns on your main speaker should always be about seven feet in the air is where the horn should be uh, therefore that way it gets over everybody's head and can cover the entire room um, bass in your PA just bass in general um, just covers the room no matter what it's just what it does it covers everywhere with no help people can stand in front of it no problem but if you have a good PA system that does not have two 15s and a horn that's the worst um, configuration you can get period because you are not giving your vocals or your guitars anything to make them sound good like a couple of 12s in there too or 10s um, some bullet tweeters uh, which help it good four-way cabinets because nothing is covering the vocal range or the guitar range you're just going from 15 inch speakers right to a horn you're missing the speakers that can and will reproduce the clear stuff your vocals cannot sound like this because they will sound like this because your PA was your cabinets were selected wrong by whoever bought them okay so you don't want those cabinets and then just set them on the ground every time somebody walks by your cabinets um, nobody in the back can hear anything you've got everybody walking in front of the horn which is the only clarity you have in the thing since you've already robbed everybody of hearing the clarity out of um, a three or a four-way system which is a must okay it's not just a suggestion it's a must and for your monitors same thing use like three-way systems three-way monitors um, you'll sing yourself flipping horse if you don't have a mid-range speaker in there if you got a 15 in horn you're gonna sing yourself hoarse all the time and I bet you do every single night okay so remember that make sure your top cabinets or again the horn and any other size speakers you have other than 15s are up above people's heads okay and a lot of people don't figure this um, if you guys are doing things where you're doing them correctly and you have your amplifiers on the sides of you and you're doing them just for yourself or everybody's going direct and with their in-ear monitors you've got probably a PA cabinet over here and one way over here what's going on in the middle nothing it sounds very weird if you go to concerts you'll see this but you probably don't know what it is because you're not paying attention to sound right along the front of the stage it will look like monitors but they're just more array cabinets which you're probably not using but the big speakers that are all hooked together that do a big arc thing they'll grab a few of those you know 10 of them and put them right on the front of the stage and point it point them out towards the audience that way they hear the entire band along the front of the audience so for you on the dance floor to add more clarity if you want to throw some monitors out there that go at a direction that can still cover the middle ground of the people who are even seated at your venue um, and they don't have to be as loud as the big ones but just something to fill in the space okay because it's hard to cover everything if you don't bring in an adequate sound system okay so if the middle of the stage is so quiet because everybody's going direct which is a great way to go you need something going on again on stage people will dance by the main cabinet over here and then the and then they go over the other cabinet right or something else so cover the front of the stage with a few cabinets that are dedicated strictly for the front of that um, 
And here is the way to do that. And another way. These are two very amazing ways to do these things. And if you're going to not listen to anything in this video until this, um, this section is very important. Um, in your system, if you are modular, or if you're not, if you've got a powered PA head, you will have a um, line out on there that is actually like a um, preamp output or whatever. Anyway, what you want to do in your main PA, you've got a mixing board, you've got power amps, you have equalizers, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully you have a crossover because you're doing things correctly and using separate amps for separate parts of your sound system. Um, what you do is take a send, which means a chord, a guitar chord, <laughs> um, or a microphone chord, depending if you're using powered cabinets, which really suck. They're always going to be noisy. Uh, my PA is huge, and you will not even know it's on if it's sitting there ready to blow your head off. It's hum free. No, not even a single hiss coming out of the horns. Why? Because I'm amazing. And so is my gear, because it's running correctly. But um, here's where you get the fun stuff. Um, and I'm going to teach you how to never have to run out in front and check your mix ever again if you're just mixing from stage you can do it for sound check but then after that you never need to again ever because um, I'm bright like this okay so if you want to run those front uh, fill cabinets that will help the center of the stage groovy and this will be ran the same way as this other cabinet that will be a powered cabinet or just have a monitor wedge that is three-way as well something that you can actually hear the articulation in and simply come out of your equalizer that goes to the mains right before it splits and goes everywhere in your crossover so you go through your entire PA and the last thing before it goes into your power amps is normally your 31 band EQ that covers everything um, that will actually come before the crossover that goes into all the separate amps but um, again, use Y cables and one will go into your equalizer. Then your other split you did, um, put whatever you need onto that. That can just be a something that has a XLR on it and send it over to um, the power amp that has uh, or that is going to power all the front speakers in the middle. Or if you're not doing that, um, you can split this as many times as you want. You know, it always gets a little dumber as time goes by unless you have an actual splitter or a patch bay to make everything come out correctly. Um, anyway, if you have a cabinet dedicated strictly for monitoring the front of house, um, number one, people, never jump monitors off of your main cabinet. It's retarded. It should be the last thing you ever do in your life. If you're doing it, um, hire somebody else and fire yourself out of the band. It's the dumbest thing you can do. Um, so you come out of the <laughs> signal that goes into your equalizer, your main band equalizer. So where it goes into the input, you might have another place that says input. Groovy, go into that. It's just parallel. And then go out into a cabinet that is powered again or powered by an external power amp. Um, you don't have to EQ it any except for if it's feeding back a little bit. Then turn some of that stuff back. You can turn on and off that source again by one of these. Okay? And when you click it on to hear everything, you will be able to judge exactly and tell who screwed up and is fucking your band over by turning up after sound check and all this stuff and who keeps doing it all through the night because now you hear the mix exactly as it is out front you will not get the tone of what's going out front because you would have to have your entire PA uh, sound system sorry about the PA mark remark um, pointed towards you but you will get exactly the mix um, coming through that one cabinet and you can always monitor what's coming out of the front as far as the mix who's louder than what okay so that is a beautiful thing 
Okay, so whoever's running sound, you can do that. If you need a reference monitor, fine, but in a big band situation, you're going to probably need something with a little bit of oomph to it. But um, I generally stick, you know, a good two-way cabinet with a 10 or a 12 in it, plus a horn, up on a set of sticks, which is a speaker stand. Um, put it somewhere not beside me because it's going to feed back into your microphone if it's on the side of you. Monitors are meant to be put in front of you because they have, the mics have rear feedback rejection, not on the sides. So put a little bit in front of you and click it on. You can hear exactly what the mix is out front. And turn and mix that way. And then you could turn it back off if you so desire, unless you want to just monitor it all the time. But that's one of the best ways to do it. And plus that same mix, you can send it again right to the power amps that are going to power the little cabinets on the front if you're going to bother to do it. If you don't bother to do it, you're, again, cheating yourself and cheating your audience of a much, much better sound. You can do like four little cabinets across the front and it just makes such a difference and it's just sitting right on the edge of the stage and just covering that area and again not trying to keep up with the main PA okay um, lastly I'm just going to mention um, most things will be 4 ohms or 8 ohms okay this means your amplifier your actual amp that's in your PA or your mini amps will have and be able to do 8 ohm loads and 4 ohm loads. What is that? That's the impedance. Um, so you got an 8 ohm cabinet and then you got another 8 ohm cabinet. That will bring the entire load down to 4 ohms. So you see what the wattage is on that amplifier at 4 ohms and compare it to your speaker cabinet put together. Okay, so you've got two 300 watt speaker cabinets. Okay, so you're like, okay, 600 watts total. So I should get an amplifier that will put 600 watts out at 4 ohms. No, you should double that. You should put 1,200 watts into it because your amp will only go up to, you'll want to use a lot of headroom. Um, you'll want to slam 1,200 watts worth of power through there because you need headroom that is clean. If you've ever used a radio in a... Um, a gremlin that's a car people or a nova or your any any crappy car and you turn the factory radio up past a quarter or a half it just <laughs> just goes to hell that's what your PA will do if you underpower it you are going to use the power amp to simply give you all the clean headroom that you can give those cabinets Okay, so that they will not distort, the amp will not get hot, the amp will not distort, and therefore your um, cabinets, your PA cabinets, your sound system cabinets, will not be amplifying <laughs> the distortion from the um, amp. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. And you always want to do at least double the power on your subs. Okay, it doesn't take much to power horns. Okay, if you are uh, bi-amping, tri-amping, uh, going four-way, which most people will do if they are doing some major outdoor stuff and you really need some subs that are going to um, kick some major ass because they need to. But for your stuff that you're probably doing for this, um, probably not going to have to worry about it. But here's the... Wattage is generally not the real way to go with this, but that's what we're going to go with. You actually want to go with um, your SPL or your DBs or whatever each cabinet is when you're looking to buy something. Um, if your SPL is like something over 120, so 135 uh, SPL or DB is the number you're basically looking for to have a good cabinet. Most of your crap ones, uh, your Behringer's and your other crap stuff, your JBL Eons, one of the worst cabinets ever in the world. Um, anyway, all this cheap crap 
will be in the 90s. It's non-efficient. You're going to have to put a lot more wattage through it than normal stuff because it's just a crap cabinet and it's it's choking under the wattage just trying to make some sound. So look for the stuff that is efficient and is way up there. Um, nothing will be listed over 135 decibels dB. Okay. Um, because who would need it? Nobody. You're going to kill them. They're going to go deaf. And there's kind of laws against permanently uh, screwing up people's brains and hearing. Okay, so here's the basic thing on that. 90%, um, I'm making up a number, but that's probably true of all companies, or especially with sound system stuff, or even a powered PA head. Let's say you have a powered PA head and it's advertised as 1,600 watts. Of course it's not that. <laughs> um, it's going to be uh, 400 watts and then split it up into two. So you're going to have 200 watts going that way, 200 watts going that way, and you can only use half of that power that's going to be clean. So you only got 100 watts there and 100 watts there that are usable. How did I come up with that? Because they like to, the manufacturers, uh, put out what the peak wattage is. That does you no good. That's a bullshit reading that has nothing to do with what you're going to be doing. So they put 1600 watts because it looks good to say that. Then when it says um, program, so you got peak, program, then continuous or RMS. Continuous or RMS is what you want to go by 100% of the time. If they don't provide that for you, um, this is how you get it. If it says peak, okay, that's the 1600 watts. It doesn't do that cut it in half for program that's 800 watts that is not it either okay they're still making you do math cut it again that 800 watts in half 400 watts that's what you're really dealing with and 400 watts by two channels everything's going to be two channels unless you're bridging something which you can go read on your own um, but anyway, um, so you got two channels, you actually have 400 real watts, RMS, or whatever, but only half of that power is going to be clean power. Again, we're back to the radio in a shitty car. So you have a 100 watts, and your cabinets need double. Okay, so now you've got an 800 watt RMS cabinet over here, or you have... Those two cabinets I were talking about on one side and then two cabinets on the other side, they're both 8 ohms. They're down to 4 ohms now. So you've got a 4 ohm load of, and they will handle the 800 watts RMS now. So you want to be giving them 1,600 watts per side RMS or continuous power. So you're not doing it. <laughs> you're giving them 100 watts, 50 watts Per cabinet okay that is sad so you need to step up your game and get the proper power okay now here's the deal I've said that and that is that you can look up this stuff up all day long if you have a 100 watt amp and you double it to 200 watts does that double the volume no that gives you three decibels of boost. I mean, from this to this, hardly even be able to tell. You need to multiply that by 10 times. So, say you have um, 100 watts and you multiply it by 10, you got 1,000 watts. 10, multiply it by 10, that will give you double the output power perceived. It seems double. It's really not, but it takes 10 times. So now you've got a thousand watts that still cannot push those speakers correctly. You need 1600 watts. So now you got to go again and keep on doing that until you have double of what those can actually handle. Okay, so that's how that game works. Ten times the wattage in RMS specs in order to double the perceivable output. Okay, so if you have a Marshall 100 watt stack there, you would need 10 of them for it to sound twice as loud. 
two of them next to each other, that's not going to sound double. It's going to sound almost identical to the one stack. You're just pushing a little more air because you have eight more speakers next to it. Okay, so that's the way all that works. Okay. Okay. So that is a whole bunch of stuff um, for you to just kind of chew on to figure out and um, think about. Any other questions you may have, please put them in the comments below. And I will make another video or 10 videos, whatever it takes, to uh, further um, this video. Just keep on adding on to the questions you have. Okay? So you guys be um, amazing as I know you can be. And I'll gladly help you out with all of this stuff. Okay? So, again... Um, Quit bending over. Nobody wants to see your ass crack and people think you're maybe bending over to get your drugs off there or whatever because you keep coming back up with nothing. What's he doing down there? Does his contact keep falling out? What's going on? Or you're bending over and you're hitting something and making a noise and then touching something else and making a noise and the whole band has to stop until your delay is in sync. Quit that crap. There's so much gear on the market. Cut the shit out. Okay, and do not tune between songs because you're taking up valuable time. Tune during, and again, they make better tuners than what you're using that you can just tune while you're going. Okay, so again, comments below and suggestions below are better. Okay, or um, questions to what I have already posted, and I will answer them on another video so everybody gets it and doesn't have to read everything below. Okay. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.